This is the portion where everybody throws things at you. Excellent. <laughs> Are there gifts? We get to keep these? Uh, you know, take your pick. Um, okay, so what can you tell us about the Siren Curse, the Siren Song, this upcoming season? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like we said, it's a huge part of our mythology, and obviously we left off in a place um, where Ben is very deeply affected having been Siren, so there's a kind of a lot of stuff to unravel from that and how he's going to deal with it and how it starts to evolve and like they're going to we're going to learn more about how the siren song works and there might be some others that uh, get exposed to it so as we know it's it's there's, you know it can affect people in different ways so there's a negative siren song and the more loving positive siren song so we'll play with both those things as well and my question about that is i don't know how much you can tell us but is the power intent-based? Like, is the mermaid able to use that in different ways, or is it something that is not con not, a control not controllable by anyone? So that's what we'll explore a yeah. Do they have control over it? Yeah. What like, does it do from like, their Is end? there a weapon version that they can use and that kind of thing? And, and we gotta get you in the writer's room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's my question. Right. And whether or not they do have control over it, and whether they're affected in any way by it, so we're going to explore all of these um, physiological... And you, you know, even in season one, you, you saw sometimes they use it as a way to connect and when we're in bed, yeah. right? And then, but it also can be in a moment of distress that they want to lure someone in to potentially attack them and you know, get themselves out of danger. And also we're going to explore what it means to the mermaids when they sing it, how it feels for them, how they experience it. Why do you guys think the series is so popular with, with, with women? Well, I guess these themes, um, I, it sort of just occurred to me actually. I didn't really, I don't know, I wasn't aware that it was such a female base. But I think it has to do with the female empowerment of it. And, um, what a strong character Amy plays in Brynn. And how it just taps into something, especially in young women, and sort of trying to find their own identities and their own powers. I feel like it's really, it can relate in this way to something fixed for that. And so I feel um, close to that. Beyond just the siren song this season, what can we expect out of season two? So, you know, there's, there's obviously a lot of seeds that we planted in season one. Um, you know, I think the most obvious at the end of the last episode with that phone call from Maddie's mother, that's definitely a character that's going to come into it and sort of create a lot of conflict for Maddie and these other characters. Um, and like, like we said on the panel, there will be more that are coming onto land. And it's really going to allow us to to get into a lot of the uh, mermaid mythology, sort of how their life is like socially in the sea, uh, really just dig into a lot of that, how they, what they, what they learn as they're on land, how they have more time to spend on land. I think it's just a lot of chances to really dig into that in an interesting way. I feel like we kind of barely scratched the surface in season one of Ben and his family and that history. We're going to get a little bit more of that in season two as well. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that definitely tied, we love that dynamic, first of all, and that, that conflict with his father, and that his father sort of represents, you know, this side of the town that maybe is at odds with the mermaids. Um, and so we definitely have a lot of story we're building that's going to involve Ted oh, okay. and Ben. And also, um, Helen plays into it a little bit, too, with some of the family history. So yeah. all of that will start to come out very slowly again, because we don't want to just unpack the whole thing sure. quickly. But definitely digging into that for the next. It, it's a small town, so there's like a lot of history and a lot of like crosses that happen in an unexpected way. Uh, one of the most sort of interesting dynamics that you guys mentioned, and it's very obvious in the show, like that the love triangle isn't a traditional, uh, you know, fight over a couple of them, and it feels like it would be possibly better solved in a healthy communal relationship. Is that something you guys like? If the story takes you, are you willing to put that on television? Is that yeah something that you're you're at? You're in we've always been yeah. telling yeah. 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 it's so it's fast. Just, like the dynamic seems to be changing about like what's acceptable in a relationship. But there's other shows about like recent relationships that are on air right now. And we really are interested in it. Yeah. I, think, I think the whole world is interested in it. Yeah. It's just a matter of how to unpack it and in the right way. Yeah. So that the relationship is built very organically and then it can feel positive. Yeah, and it's not a scandal. It's like people learning more about different healthy relationships. Right, and not to say that some people would be scandalous in our town. It's 
small town. Oh, yeah. But the idea that she doesn't have the constraints that we do, and that Ben and Manny, I think in many ways, also live in a kind of different way than they're, they're, you know, they're not the norm of the town. No, they're not. Yeah. And so I think um, it's right for the telling. Yeah. 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 Well, speaking of that, where is Ben and Maddie's relationship going to go from season, episode 10? Where's it going to start in season 2? Yeah, I mean, Ben... Ben's got a lot to deal with, and, and they need to they need to repair that relationship. And, you know, we do ultimately want them to be together, but it's going to evolve in a way that that's different from, from season one. You know, um, they uh, we'll see Ben sort of taking steps to deal with his addiction early on, and. Um, you know, we definitely want, like, that's a relationship that's important to us. But also, it's another aspect of that, even that relationship that I think we like to tell, which is that it doesn't have to be this traditional, oh, we had a big fight over something that's complicated, we're breaking up, and now we need to find new love interests. So I think we always want to tell it in the most complicated way, that the love is clearly there. So how are they going to get through this? What are they going to do about it? And who else is going to play into it? And so I think if we approach it that way, it makes it more interesting than our traditional breakup, come together, love triangle, whatever. They're also the keepers of this huge secret. And we sort of feel like the strength of this relationship is really important for our larger mermaid story. Because they're, they're the ones who can manage the situation properly. And there's sort of all these other forces that are threatening to either expose the mermaids or it could get really bad. We feel like Ben, Maddie, Rin together are the ones that can kind of save this situation. So the relationship is critical. And also be a twist in the story of Maddie's mom coming to town as well. Which is that she and her dad and the house of 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 the house